Hello there! As you may know, AWS reInvent 2021 just happened, and Elastic had a session about observability that you may have missed. But fear not, we take good care of our community, and for this reason, we decided to build this version of the session so you can watch from the comfort of your couch as many times as you want. The session title was Observability for your AWS environment as you modernize and it was presented live by yours truly. The session explained the need for a unified observability strategy and how Elastic can help your journey with AWS, including the migration from on-premises to production applications deployed in the cloud. But before we get into this, let me introduce myself. For those of you that don't know me, well, hello there. My name is Ricardo Ferreira and I work for Elastic in the developer relations team also known as the community. And there, I am a developer advocate with a specific focus on observability. Before Elastic, I used to work for other vendors such as Confluent, Oracle, and Red Hat, where I've built an extensive experience in the areas of distributed systems, observability, streaming systems, and databases. If you want to reach out and talk about anything of this or anything we're going to discuss here today in this session, you can hit me on riferay.com, which is my blog, and there you can find all my details and context. Or if you use Twitter, you can find me on Twitter as well, and my Twitter handle is at riferay, as you can see in the bottom of this slide. During the in-person session, I asked the attendees to generate data to Elastic Observability by playing the demo I built around the famous game Pac-Man. Since you won't be able to play the game live, I will show you what the demo looks like. One of the most important parts of the game is this globally available scoreboard where everybody can see who is actually rocking on the game. So as you can see now, uh, Elisa is the number one player and I am in second place. These scoreboards recompute automatically as the new data arrives and the whole computation is being handled by streaming data technologies based on Apache Kafka and KSQL DB. All the data is then published eventually to a Redis cache that has been managed by AWS using Elastic Cache. So I'm going to play a little bit more so you're going to see my score increasing from 2,230 to something more. So I'm going to use my login again and hit enter. And when I do this, the game automatically tries to load all my previous data and game from the Redis cache. So by the time I start playing again, everything is the way I've left. I'm going to hit enter and then again we'll start. So as you can see here, my score is currently increasing. And, um, but as you can see, there's a high score that is Elisa's score. So I'm very close to her. So I'm going to hit P, which is pause. And then I'm going to come back to scoreboard. And as you can see here, the scoreboard now reflects what I've had in my game. 3,230, which is exactly the current score I have it in my game. When we get back to the demo in the end, you will understand the relationship between the Pac-Man game and Elastic Observability. Right now, let's take one step back and discuss the need for a unified observability. Today, many organizations treat observability as a set of different silos, each one focusing on a signal type. By signal type, we mean telemetry data such as metrics, logs, and traces. They are usually handled by isolated processes, tools, and different teams which is a massive source of frustration as it leads to increased MTTD, mean time to detect, and MTTR, which is mean time to resolution, and also leads to reduced productivity. At Elastic, we believe the first step to adopt observability is identifying the existence of those silos and understanding the problems they cause. A better way to look at observability is by unifying all the signal types into one cohesive context, which unlocks the ability of an organization to answer questions about its systems and services with much confidence. By doing so, your metrics, logs, and traces will provide much more insight into the current state 
of your AWS environments. As a result of the unification, you will better correlate all the signal types with your own custom business and operational KPIs. This is when observability stops being something that just helps you with your infrastructure and becomes a key source of insight. If you ever find yourself struggling to justify observability to your organization, this is a proven way to get things done. Now let's discuss how Elastic Observability helps implement a unified observability strategy. It provides users with a single pane of glass that presents all signal types properly correlated and integrated within a single platform. This alone is a massive boost to strategies that rely on having users handling different tools and interfaces. In this platform, you can find many tools that are known in the observability space, such as APM, logging, infra, and metrics and monitoring, plus alerting, and others that are unique to Elastic Observability, such as machine learning, causation analysis, real user monitoring, and much more. Another cool thing about Elastic Observability is its availability as both cloud-native and on-premises offerings. While you can certainly use it natively with your AWS services running in the same availability zone, you can also install it on-premises using different deployment modules, such as Docker, Kubernetes, or even Bare Metal. In my experience, the most painful part of adoption observability is bringing the data in. The exposure to different tools for each telemetry data, like one agent for logs, another for metrics, as well as the complex pipelines that sometimes you have to build, is what causes the pain. Elastic solves this problem by providing a unified agent capable of handling all types of telemetry data. These agents can be managed by a central location, which happens to be the Elastic Observability platform. Elastic Observability is also compatible with Open Telemetry. So, it works the same way if you want to bring data in using this standard. All the data obtained, regardless of the strategy used, can be analyzed using out-of-the-box and ad hoc analysis tools that are built in into the platform. In the past, observability was deemed enough just by having people look at the data and watching dashboards all day to understand what was going on. Today, with the explosion of distributed systems and the high data volume coming from them, it is virtually impossible to keep doing things the way we used to do. The reason why Elastic Observability offers you automated tools to handle scenarios of anomaly detection, APM data correlation, and building topologies dynamically as the new data from traces keep coming in. All of this helps you to isolate problems and minimizing considerably the amount of time with technical investigations. Now it is time for us to understand what type of data the Pac-Man game helped us to generate. I have here an Elastic Observability Platform created on Elastic Cloud. It is currently handling different services from AWS, such as API Gateway, Lambda Functions, containers running on AWS Fargate, a Redis cluster created with Elastic Cache, and a Kafka cluster created with Amazon MSK. Telemetry data from all these services are being collected and stored into Elastic Observability continuously. Let's take a look at this now. So this is the Elastic Observability Platform that I've mentioned before that I created on Elastic Cloud. As you can see here, this Elastic Observability has been created uh, at, at AWS and is co-located in the same availability zone that hosts the other AWS services that I'm monitoring with this platform. So what I'm gonna do now is jump straight to my Elastic Observability so you can see what I meant by calling this a single glass pane. So as you can see here, 
in the same interface, you can look at the logs, metrics, APM data, and uptime, which is availability time, uh, from the services that I'm monitoring from AWS. So let's start by discussing logs, right? So uh, for you to understand this, I'm going to show you the Lambda functions that I currently have deployed here. So as you can see here, I have three functions written in Java, scoreboard function, event handler function, and a Alexa handler function. And the logs from those functions are continuously collected from AWS and they're being sent to Alaska Observability. So that's what you were looking here. So if you open the actual logs application, you're going to be able to see in near real time everything that's going on. For example, uh, there's this uh, scoreboard function that has been continuously invoked every five seconds. So uh, in nearly every five seconds, you're going to see that this uh, panel here updates. So this is the result of the data being collected. And as you can see here, we can actually slice and dice all the logs for in terms of data sets. So you can improve your ability to investigate and uh, troubleshoot problems. Uh, what I meant before about uh, uptime data that I called before, this is what we call availability data. So if we look here to the app, I am currently monitoring the three main important endpoints of my Pac-Man game. So in order for the Pac-Man game to work, I need to make sure that number one, the event handler API, this is actually an API that I've deployed on AWS, is up and running because all the data that comes from the Pac-Man eating the, the little dots, they are being sent to this API. So if the API is not available, the game doesn't work, right? So that's the first, as well as the actual welcome page because it's the main page where the user will start playing the game. It has to be available. And the scoreboard API, which it basically is behind that page that I've showed before that lists all the users. So a way for you to actually analyze the availability time for each one of them is using what we call monitor. So for example, I have a monitor configured to actually extract availability time every five seconds from those APIs. And you can see here the actual result of it check that brings you, for example, oh, what is the response code for this and the actual response headers for this. Uh, I've disabled in my configuration, but you could be able to also sh see here the response body. But for security uh, measures, I, I thought that was uh, better to not show anything here, right? Uh, besides the availability time and logs, obviously one of the things that you can evaluate with Alaska Observability are metrics, right? So metrics are broken down into two types, right? There will be the metrics that you can analyze it regarding specific hosts or whether if it's VMs or containers or Kubernetes pods that you have running on AWS. So for all of them, you can extract metrics from the operating system such as CPU usage, the CPU load, memory usage, and network traffic, right? So that is what we call, let's say, traditional monitoring of systems and metrics, right? However, there are also some very neat high level services and metrics that you can be collected. And right now, this is what's going on. For you to understand this, let me show you some of the containers that I have running here on AWS ECS, Elastic Container Service, right? So in ECS, I am running the Fargate um, distribution, which is kind of the serverless distribution for an AWS. And I have these two uh, services here called Redis Sync and KSQL Service DB. So remind when I explained before that all the stream processing from this uh, the Pac-Man game has been handled using Kafka and this uh, framework called KSQL DB. So KSQL DB is actually deployed here as a container on uh, AWS Fargate. So right now, this container is actually being continuously monitored by Elastic Observability. And you can check this if we look to the dashboard that has been automatically created, right, by Elastic Observability. So this is what we, what it looks like for you to monitor and analyze AWS Fargate using Elastic Observability. So you have the visibility of all your main containers and you can filter them if you want it, of course. You can filter them by region, cluster name, or task, right? Task is a naming convention for an AWS Fargate. And you can see the details about number of containers that has been spun up, 
CPU utilization, memory, and the number of like disk IO reads and writes that these containers are doing. So right off the bat, you can see what are your main offenders in terms of container if it's something that you want to monitor for maybe to reduce your billing with AWS, right? Another cool thing is that uh, the actual Lambda functions, the three ones that I've mentioned before, they are also being monitored by uh, Elastic Observability. So if I go here to this other matrix visualization, this is one is the, that is a specific um, focus on Lambda functions. So as you can see here, I can monitor the top errors, the duration of the, each Lambda function, and what was the most throttle Lambda function um, in the period of five minutes, right? So this is the type of thing that, uh, by the way, this dashboard has been automatically created. I didn't create it, but all the data that fuels that dashboard is stored on Alaska Observability. So one of the things that you can do as well is to build your own visualizations using uh, Alaska Observability. That, in turn, is built on top of Kibana. So it is an analytics tool, very flexible, very customizable, that you can use to build your own visualizations, right? And lastly, we have here the APM uh, data. So APM stands for Application Performance Monitoring, right? So I'm gonna open here the application from APM and you can clearly see here that there are three services that we can monitor using Elastic Observability. The first one is the scoreboard uh, web page, right? So uh, if we look to the, not the last five minutes, but for the last hour, Right, we're gonna see here that the scoreboard web page has been invoked when I showed you before, and then you will be able to see all the details from the distributed transaction that has been executed behind the scenes when that page was being loaded. So you can clearly look at this and see what was the main offender in terms of performance or perhaps even availability for that particular transaction. So this is a very easy way for you to troubleshoot things. Speaking about troubleshoot and the relationship with APM, I've mentioned before that one of the things that uh, Elastic Observability does is automatic correlation, right? So let me show you what I meant by this. I'm gonna pick up this other service here that uh, it is the Alexa handler function, right? And I know for sure that this service, right, um, it is every, every, from time to time, there is this wake up, uh, boot that calls us just to make sure that the Lambda function will be alive by the time I use it, right? And by the way, I'm going to use it in a minute. But this wake up time generates an error, right? And as you can see here, uh, there has been 106 error that has been executed from the last hour, right? So if I don't know what the error is, but let's suppose that I didn't know, right? So what I could do here on Elastic Observability is to look at this transaction and very quickly here click on investigate and jump straight to the logs, right? So in the end of the day, that's what you would do in a real life, right? You first would zoom in and where the problem is, and then you would jump straight to the look into the logs. But here it is very straightforward. You can simply click it. Here is the actual log enter that you should analyze to troubleshoot what's going on. And then you can simply view the details of that log and inspect all the metadata that has been collected from that log, including, of course, the actual message. So I can click here and show the message and I can simply scroll down and look and clear this very famous problem here. It is a new pointer exception that has been uh, executing in it exactly line here, line 54 of my Alexa handler. So I can uh, show this for the developing team and they will be everything they have, they will have everything they need to actually start fixing and creating a new release of the software that solves that bug, right? So this is one of the cool features that you can use it for uh, automatically correlating APM data with logs. Another thing that I've mentioned before is the service map and the topologies that are continuously created and updated. So one of the things that you can do, for example, is if you pick up a service here, and if you click here on this tab service map, you're gonna see that all the dependencies and the relationships from that service are automatically discovered, right? So this uh, specific service here, which is the Lambda function that I've created before, has been instrumented to send data to uh, Alaska Observability using OpenTelemetry, right? So uh, 
when this open telemetry data arrived here on Alaska Observability, Alaska Observability start spinning, spinning up all of the machines that actually analyze that data and discover those dependencies. So right now, the only dependency that we have here is actually the Radis cache, because remember, uh, what the scoreboard uh, function does is to query the, the Radis cache and return all the list of players, right? So, but if we had any other dependencies, that they would show up here, right? So that's one of the cool things that it, it is automatically done for you. So it is handy for situations where, okay, I don't know the topology of my, or the architecture of my application, but I would like to understand more, right? So this is uh, handy for situations like this. Right now, let's do another quick demo to wrap this up so you can see in real time the, how Alaska Observability actually reacts to a transaction that we're going to invoke it using the Alexa device. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to get ready here to actually show you in real time the execution of the function, which specifically is going to be the, from the Alexa handler. And I'm going to actually zoom in to show only the last minute. Uh, so we can like take a very good, good picture about what's going on. So right now there's only two last transactions that has been executed is the waking up invocation, right? So what I'm going to do now is to look at this scoreboard again and I'm going to make a question to the Alexa device. So this is my device and I'm going to make the question right now. Alexa. Tell me who is the best player. The best player is Alyssa. And as you can see here, this is true. I'm going to do a second question. Alexa, tell me the latest about the fourth position. Here is some info about Faith. Their current score is 1470 and is currently playing on level one. Faith didn't die not even once. So now that we've executed two transactions using our Alexa handler, let's see how this reflect in our observability platform. So if we refresh right now, we're going to see that we have four new transactions. Probably the waking up is uh, along with them as well, but we can actually transverse all these executions here. So that was the first one. Uh, I would bet this is the actual uh, transaction that checks the best player. We can look at here by the invocation of this function. And if we look to the details about the invocation from Radis, we can actually inspect the metadata. And this is the result that has been given saying, yeah, Lisa was the best player, right? Because she has the highest score. And if, if we move forward, we're probably going to be able to see another function, which is the when I've asked it about the fourth position. So this is the execution from, it starts from my Alexa handler function, right? Which is the entry point. And then it calls this, uh, it's all reading in Java. So this is a Java method that represents the handler. It connects to Redis and then performs a Z card operations to see if there are elements on the cache. And then it invokes this other method, player details by position, which executes a Z card and a rev range to finally perform a get operation. So when the fourth position according to the scoreboard is uh, faith. So this was the details that was retrieved from the Redis cache. And as you can see here, it has been automatically discovered using the uh, Elastic Observability instrumentation. Finally, let's take a look in another type of telemetry data that has been continuously collected and stored into Elastic Observability. And this is what we call user experience or real user experience, right? So if we look here to this dashboard and if we increase the, let's say the last 24 hours of visitation of page, you're going to see that there are two web applications that represents my Pac-Man game. Uh, the first one is the actual game, as you can see here, and the scoreboard page, right? So all of those two web applications has been also instrumented using our uh, run agent. And what they do is actually they collect automatically all the tracings and metrics data from those applications. And you can see here that you can use this information to analyze uh, data such as uh, load time and core web vitals. And one of the cool things that you can also do is to check whatever the some metadata regarding the browser that has been used, slice and dice by operating system. And you can also 
uh, zoom in giving the location of where this data is coming from. For example, I am uh, right now, I live in North Carolina in Raleigh. So as you can see here, this is me when I was uh, playing the Pac-Man demo to show you everything that I wanted. So you can, all, all of this has been automatically collected by the agent and sent into Elastic Observability. And this is just a platform showing you what you can do with this information. And again, everything is available in a single pass lane. And this is what makes uh, the Elastic Observability is so outstanding because you no longer have to rely on different tools, different processes, or different technologies to see and implement your observability strategy. If you want to play with this demo with your own AWS environment, you can use the code available here in this GitHub repository. Everything that I've showed you today came from that code that automatically creates all the AWS services for you, including the Elastic Observability Platform. The code automates everything using Terraform, which is an infrastructure as code technology from HashiCorp. And this brings us to the end of this presentation. And I would like to thank you for the time that you have spent here today with us, learning a bit more about Elastic Observability. And stay tuned for all the other sessions, webinars, and live streams that the community team produces in a regular basis. You can find us the content that we produce in our Elastic community channel on YouTube. Have a nice day.